Hey everyone, Nexus here, and today we're back with another installment of our ongoing series, Unheard of Serial Killers. Today we're venturing into the Middle Eastern nations. You may think that that area of the world is so strict that murder is a rarity. Or maybe you imagine war-torn countries where slaughter is a regular occurrence rather than a shocking crime. In reality, the Middle East has its share of serial killers, just like any other region but you're not very likely to have heard of any of them. Brothers George and Michael Tanelian killed 11 people, mostly taxi drivers, in Lebanon's main district, earning themselves the nickname the Taxi Driver Killers. They boarded taxis at night, and George would sit in front besides the driver, while Michael would sit at the back. Once they got into a remote location, George would tell the driver to pull over so that he could relieve himself. As soon as the driver pulled over and George began to exit the vehicle, Michael would shoot the driver in the head. They'd then rob the body and set the car on fire. Sometimes, they'd dump the body by the roadside and use the cab to carry other victims who they also robbed and killed. Lebanese intelligence officers once went undercover, posing as taxi drivers to catch the brothers. An agent once engaged them in a struggle, but they managed to escape. The pair were arrested after police tracked a victim's phone that they'd sold. Along with the two of them, police arrested three other brothers as suspects, until Michael confessed during questioning that he and George had carried out the killings. George and Michael were charged before a military court and were sentenced to death. Mohammed Behay whooped and killed 16 boys between March and September 2004 in Pakdasht, Iran. He tricked the boys into the desert by telling them that they were going hunting. Once he'd finished with them, he'd bury their bodies in shallow, sandy graves, earning him his nickname, the Iranian Desert Vampire. Behay received 16 death sentences, one for each boy he killed, as well as 100 lashes. He was publicly executed in Pakdasht on March 16, 2005. His execution was attended by over 5,000 people who booed and threw stones at him as he was flogged. At one point, a brother of one of his victims broke through the crowd and stabbed him in the back. After receiving his lashes, Behay was tied to one end of a rope while the other end was attached to a crane. The crane then lifted him up by the neck until he died. Dubbed the Sana'a Ripper, Mohammed Adam Omar murdered 16 women at Sana'a University in Yemen, where he worked as a morgue attendant. He lured the ladies, all medical students, under the guise of helping them with their studies. Once they got into the morgue, the former boxer killed them with his bare hands. He cut off their hands and feet and soaked them in chemicals. He buried the remains but kept their bones as souvenirs. His arrest came after the bodies of 21 female students were discovered buried on school grounds and dumped in school sewers. He initially confessed to 16 of the murders and even claimed responsibility for other crimes, saying he'd killed 51 women in Yemen, Jordan, Lebanon, and Kuwait since 1975. He later retracted his statement and confessed to just two of the murders. He said he couldn't resist the urge to kill beautiful women and wanted to send them to heaven. He even told a female reporter that beautiful women like her shouldn't be allowed to live, sending her running from the interview. Omar was sentenced to death and was executed by firing squad near the school where he found his victims. He was also given 40 lashes for the crime of drinking alcohol. Mahin Qadri is Iran's first documented female serial killer. She was convicted for killing six people, including five women, between February 2008 and May 2009 in the city of Kazvin. Most of her victims were elderly women who she picked up outside of prayer houses. 
Once they entered her car, she would play mind games with them, telling them how much they reminded her of her own mother. She then offered them drugged juice to knock them out, after which she suffocated them to death and robbed them. In one instance, a victim regained consciousness and she finished her off with an iron rod. But when one of her would-be victims escaped and alerted police, Mahin's spree came to an end. Mahin claimed she committed the murders solely for money, being deeply in debt. She also claimed to have taken tips from Agatha Christie novels, which are quite popular in Iran. Agatha Christie actually visited the country several times and even used it as a setting for one of her stories, The House of Shiraz. Mahin was sentenced to death and was hanged in a prison in Kazvin. Nicknamed the Tehran Vampire, Ali Reza Cordier was sentenced to death in 1997 for whomping and killing nine girls and women in the city within four months. He posed as a taxi driver to collect female victims and he burned their bodies to make identification difficult. He once whomped and killed a woman along with her nine-year-old daughter. He stabbed another victim 30 times. Cordier was arrested at a shopping mall for behaving suspiciously and was only identified as a serial killer after his features matched a sketch provided by two would-be victims who had escaped. He was sentenced to death 10 times over and was also flogged 214 times. He was publicly executed close to where he had killed his victims. His execution was attended by 10 to 20,000 people. Many slept at the site overnight. Some even climbed electric poles to get a better view. About 1,000 policemen controlled the crowd and several streets were closed, causing a 3 kilometer traffic jam. Ali Reza arrived at the execution grounds in an unmarked police vehicle, wearing a green prison uniform. Before his hanging, he was tied to a metal bed and male relatives of his victims whipped him with a leather belt. Known as the baby-faced killer, Ali Kaya murdered 10 people, mostly in Antalya province, Turkey. He committed his first murder at the age of 18, killing his uncle. He was sent to prison but was released in March 2012, having been declared mentally unstable. He then killed three people and injured two others because they testified against him in court. He also killed one more person in his parents' house. He was arrested in November 2013 and sent back to prison, but he escaped the following January during visiting hours. The moment Ali Kaya's escape was discovered, the police launched a manhunt. Kaya fled to Turkey's Mesin and Adana provinces and probably tried crossing the border into Syria. He was later caught in a friend's house in Antalya. With him were a gun and a list of 10 more people he was planning to kill. Between 1994 and 1998, Bilal Musa and his wife Suzanne Ibrahim allegedly murdered 12 people in Jordan. They posed as journalists and salesmen to trick unsuspecting victims into their house, where they robbed and killed them. Bilal and Susan both fled to Libya in 1988 after their scheme was discovered, but they were arrested and extradited back to Jordan. Bilal was sentenced to death for seven of the twelve murders and to life imprisonment with hard labor for the robberies. His wife was convicted for one of the murders and also received a death sentence, which was later commuted to life imprisonment. But in 2005, after Bilal's execution, serial killer Zuhar Khattab confessed to killing one of the victims. A witness, who happened to be Musa's friend, now claimed Musa had been tortured during questioning and coerced into claiming responsibility for that murder. The court, however, insisted that Bilal did actually kill the victim because his confession was consistent with evidence police had found at the murder scene. Nonetheless, it's widely believed that Bilal did not commit this murder. Louis Al-Tayi, 
aka Dr. Death, killed 43 patients at a hospital in Kirkuk, Iraq over the course of six months starting in October 2005. All of his victims were Iraqi soldiers and policemen brought to the hospital for treatment. He killed them by switching off their breathing machines, cutting off electricity from operation theaters, reopening their wounds, or injecting them with lethal drugs. Al-Tai carried out the killings for the Iraqi terrorist group Ansar al-Sunna, which paid him $100 per kill. He also treated members of the group, helped them escape from hospitals, and taught them how to forge documents. These papers let them claim they'd been shot by US troops, making them eligible for treatment in a hospital in Mosul. His first victim was an Iraqi police lieutenant, Arjuman, who was recovering after undergoing surgery. al Tai snuck into his ward at night and switched off the oxygen supply. Ten days later, he killed four Iraqi National Guards by injecting them with Valium and Decadron. Other victims included Kirkuk's deputy police director and the deputy director's brother. al Tai was arrested in March 2006 after a captured senior Ansar al Suna commander gave him up. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget to like the video and subscribe so you don't miss future uploads. Stay safe out there.